worship of God will never be in vain. So I apologize for whatever happened that gave you people emotional hearts. The Catholic Diocese of Enugu has remained silent as it says it is still evaluating the allegations made by E.G. Kimpaka, a Catholic priest and the spiritual director of Adoration Ministry in Enugu, Nigeria, after more than one month. Recall that Kimpaka, in his New Year message, alleged that there was a plot to kill him after his role the Bishop of the Diocese last year. Also recall that Mbaka had at the time said the leadership of the diocese had planned to drag him to Brutellos before killing him. The outspoken Catholic priest suddenly accused the Catholic bishop of the diocese Callistus Onaga of having a hand in the plot although he did not mention the bishop by name. The director of communication in the diocese, Bernache, told a Nigerian online newspaper, Premium Times, on Saturday that the church was here to take a decision on Mbaka's allegation. The diocese hasn't made her decision yet on the allegations. We are still looking at the situation. Nothing on that yet, said Ache, who is also a Catholic priest. Recall that Mbaka had in April called for the president's impeachment over the rising insecurity in the country. The presidency fired back at Mbaka, claiming the priest was angry because Mbaka ignored his request for contracts. Onaga, the diocesan bishop, said to be displeased with the priest exchange of words with the president consequently asked Mbaka to shut down his adoration ministry for one month and embark on a retreat. One of Mbaka's followers did not see him for about 24 hours. They embarked on a protest to the bishop's residence on the suspicion that Onaga who had summoned the fairy priest might have handed him over to security agencies. The radical protest led to the emergence of Reverend Father E.G. Kimbaka, who later addressed the protesters. In vain, our labors, our worship of God will never be in vain. So I apologize for whatever happened that gave you people emotional hearts. When I heard later on that there were damages elsewhere, even in the bishop's house, even in the cathedral, I never knew. Because when I was invited in that meeting by text message, on, Sun, on Monday night, that was 4th of May, I saw the text message to meet the bishop urgently by 9.30. Before that time, I was already informed that I'm going to be invited by the bishop. So, People will call me and say, had the bishop invited? They say, no. I will look at my phone. No, no call. It was later in the night. I remember that it may be through text message. I said, let me go through my text message. Because one priest called me and said, check your text message. That somebody told him that bishop has already sent the information. By Monday. And by that Monday... Somebody has already told me that is it true that there will be no adoration on Wednesday? <laughs> Praise the Lord. I said it's not true. Say that a woman was bragging around about telling people that by Wednesday there will be no adoration 
and that I will be invited for a meeting on Tuesday. And after that Tuesday, I will not come back to my house and there will be no adoration here from that Wednesday. Listen. Let me put the story right so that you can tell people the truth. Amen. So, when I asked me, check your text message, I saw the text message, Jesus. Otherwise, I wouldn't have checked anything and I would just go for other programs. I was not asked whether that Tuesday will be available, whether I'll be disposed, whether I will be, whether I'm around. No. I just saw all gently come and see me by 9.30. So I replied, yes, my Lord, I have said I will come urgently by 9.30 by the grace of God. God bless you and protect you for us in Jesus' name. Father Mbaka, I replied. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, on that Tuesday after morning mass, I went for the meeting. I was going to see my bishop first one and one. I never knew it was to be a panel. Praise the Lord. Because the story has gone worldwide and is open. And if you don't get the story right, you may be telling lies. Because one of my offenses now is that I have not told you people the truth. So let me now tell you the truth. Listen. Now, when I came, it was a panel in a courier court in the diocese. In that hallowed courier court is a chamber where nothing that was discussed there should be made public. Under the code of subsecreto, everything is kept secret. I greeted the bishop and all of them. The auxiliary was there. The vicar general was there. The secretary was there. A lot of them all. The VC of Go University was there. The, a lot of um, vicars were there. I greeted them and sat down. And the bishop said the opening prayers and started by telling me, I said that I should tell the people the truth. So that's why I'm here. Keep quiet. As I'm mandated to tell the people the truth. Now, that um, the news you called the B Archbishop of Onisha, and the Archbishop of Onisha called him and was telling him that the news you, the one, the, the Papa representative, the Pope's representative in Abuja, was not happy with my preaching and listen, I should be careful. I should be careful. Father Mbaka, be careful. My preaching, look at it. That uh, I've uh, invited a lot of uh, uh, whatever. People are now trying to put pressure on him. A lot of pressure from outside. Preaching against uh, that Wednesday preaching on against uh, bad governance, insecurity. Where I said that employment opportunity should be a panacea to this banditry, terrorism, and insecurity in the country. That if the Millions of youths are well employed. That all these killing killings will stop. So I don't see how we should offend anybody. That uh, the news is not happy. Who this is not happy. Listen, and that I bless Nam the can. So, Bishop said I should tell you the truth. So I'm not telling you the truth. Listen. Imagine I'm here. Don't marry this man. And the girl, maybe out of love, married him. And every day the man beats 
the wife. What the wife does, occasionally she buys a bag of rice, some cartons of wine, and sends to the family and said, my husband said I should give. And they never knew that the husband has not been handling their daughter well. And one day, the man compelled the wife to say the truth. Should that happen? Me, I just want to hear.